I'm Jack from Jack Bell's Photography and today I'm going to show you how to take great underwater photos with a point and shoot camera. Many people spend a lot of money um, you're talking thousands, five, six thousand dollars or more on a DSLR for underwater photography, such as the Nikon D7200, which is one I bought, or the top of the range D850, or the Sony A7R3. And you need specialist lenses for macro, wide angle, and so on. And on top of that, you have strobes, housings, ports, uh, focus lights, light modifiers, and so on. With some su careful selection of subjects and the creative use of torchlight, I'm going to show you how you can make great photos with a point-and-shoot camera as well, such as the Olympus TG4, which I have here, and using a torch or maybe a housing to give you extended range. So, what are the advantages of a point-and-shoot camera? Well. Let, let me quickly show you. Here is my DSLR setup, and that is big and heavy. It's difficult to maneuver into small places, nooks and crannies where something might be hiding. If you've got to walk on the beach first, that's really heavy to get to your dive site. And contrast that with a point and shoot. That's without the housing and it's not much bigger with the housing as you can see. So this is great if you're on a shore entry first, you just clip it to your BCD and you don't even know it's there. Uh, when you want to use it underwater, you just unclip the bungee and now you can put the camera quite easily where you want it, put it into the nooks and crannies to try and get the shot you want. It's really, really easy. Um, you can stretch it out as far as your arm will go. Uh, that's a really great system. Using a torch like this, you can then vary your lighting. Um, you can have your light next to the torch. You can move it to the side, above, maybe even behind your, behind your subject if it's uh, slightly transparent to get better lighting. If you want to, you can also use a strobe of this sort of system. Um, you can connect um, to the base plate, a couple of arms, but then you start to lose some of the advantages of a small point and shoot, in that it starts to become bigger and more cumbersome, a little bit more like the DSLR setup. Uh, as a cheaper option, you can start off with a Nikon W300. So that literally is that sort of size. It's really small, it's waterproof down to 30 meters, no need for a housing. The uh, Olympus TG5, this is a TG4, plus a housing and torch um, will cost a little bit more, maybe $200 more for the housing, but you're still talking around uh, an investment of between 5 and 15% of your DSLR setup. Even a cheap uh, Micro Four Thirds mirrorless setup is going to cost you uh, significantly more, four or five times more than this setup. So what are the disadvantages, first of all, with a point and shoot? So if you're trying to be really steady and you're holding your, your camera for a really steady shot, then you actually need a, a third arm for your torch. So that's one of the disadvantages. Likewise, if I show you where the uh, shutter, shutter is on here, it's on this side. Now you need two right arms if you're trying to light up the subject from the right hand side as well. So, not so easy. The sensor on the point and shoot is much smaller than a DSLR, even an APS-C size sensor. So this actually introduces a lot of noise. Uh, if you want to try and get rid of this noise, uh, either in, in the camera by using JPEGs or in post-processing in something like right, Lightroom, you're actually going to lose a lot of the detail which is present in your photo. Also, um, the housing I showed you earlier for my Nikon D7200 is aluminium. 
very robust, uh, will easily go 2,000 dives. Uh, this is a plastic polycarbonate housing for my TG4. Uh, and the problem with these is I've got a, a small crack, you probably can't see that, between two of the buttons. And this is quite a co common uh, problem bit, uh, for these polycarbonate housings. I've got two friends uh, with similar housings and they both have had exactly the same problem as me after a two or three hundred dives. It's okay if you're doing uh, 20 or 30 dives a year or 40 dives a year. If you're doing a lot of dives like me, then that's a, a big problem. Also, um, certainly with the TG4 and the Nikon W300, you can get good results with smaller objects or objects that are quite close to you. But if you want to get a, a reef scape, you need a wide angle shot. For that, you need a specialist wide angle lens to get close to your reef or your main subject. And so you can light it up with your strobes efficiently. So wide angle shots are not so good uh, with this sort of setup. So what do you have to do to make great shots? First of all, patience. So the first thing to do is if you're swimming along, you're diving, you see something, most people will just take a shot, another shot. Don't do that. What you've got to do is try and get much closer. So here's our fish swimming along. You want to get slowly closer. You don't spook it. Maybe take a photo, take a photo, take a photo. And slowly get close to your subject. Um, also, a lot of people will be taking a photo of the top. Try and move the camera down to the same level as your subject. Uh, try to the side, to the front, maybe slightly above, slightly below if possible. Secondly, don't take a photo of everything you see. Uh, many people will just try and take, uh, they see something interesting, they try and take it. But if, they, if the subject isn't in a good position for photos, then your photos aren't going to come out very well. So maybe if you're taking a record of everything you see for your dive, that's great. Take a quick shot, move on, and then when you see something in a good spot, then you can take your time to try and take a really good photo. So medium-sized subjects uh, give, will give you the best results. So something this size, to something this size will give you the best result as opposed to something much bigger for which you need a wide angle lens. The TG4 will actually go a little bit smaller than that so you can see the magnet on the back of this fish. Um, the TG4 has got a microscope mode which will give you good results for something that size as well. But if you're going to start taking um, photos of microscopic subjects that you can barely see with the eye, you're going to need a lot of patience and a lot of time and a lot of wasted photos to try and take one good photo. Whereas that's where your DSLR setup will really give you much better results. Um, the other thing to notice if you want great photos is to try and take a photo when your subject is doing something interesting. So maybe the nudie branch is laying eggs or the frogfish is yawning or hunting. So that's much more interesting. So let's start off with uh, how to use the torch. So a lot of people, they get a torch, they've got one power and boom, your subject is, uh, you can see, uh, overexposed and it's not going to be very nice. But if you move your torch light, so that's off, no light, so the edge of the beam just catches your subject, that's going to give you a more pleasing result. Even better, if you can adjust the power of your torch and then combine that technique so now you've got the edge. There's no light on, just the edge. And move it until you get a good result. And there you are. That, that now is the time to take your photo and you can get much better results with that. Um, experiment with holding the torch in different positions. So maybe you're gonna take it right next to the uh, camera and point it up a little bit. If there's water behind your subjects, now you're going to get a black background. And that can really make your subject stand out. Maybe go to the side. Don't go to the side. Uh, slightly below, as in this case. Slightly above. Nothing. There's the edge of the light catching it. So a lot of these, a lot of these positions will give you different effects 
depending on where your subject is. Is it hiding in a sponge, some coral? Is it free swimming in the water? And then you can really see, uh, see the effects of your light on your photo. Um, sometimes you'll have different beam widths. This one doesn't. If you've got different beam widths, then making it more concentrated will really blow out your subject. Also, if you've got a really nervous subject, this has got red light effect. So uh, underwater, fish can't see red light. I don't know if you can see that properly. Um, I use this technique with things like bobbit worms or sometimes frogfish at night. Uh, they can't see the red light and they'll come out and start uh, behaving normally and hunting, which will give you much better results. So that's the lighting for your camera. What you want to do is remove your zoom. So instead of taking photos from a long way away, remove your zoom and start to get close. The big benefit of this is going to um, make your flash on your camera much more effective to bring out the colors. Your flash will probably be still stronger than your torch, uh, but the camera will control the strength of your flash according to how far away you are. The Olympus is a great microscope mode, so that allows you to take the really uh, photos of the really small subjects. Remember that you have to uh, change your flash settings when you use microscope modes. So you'll have to add the flash back in because the standard menu setting is to turn it off. The Nikon W300, uh, you're going to have to be a bit further away and it's not going to work so well. Also, the Nikon 3, W300, the flash isn't so strong, so you can't really use the red light either because the flash won't overpower the red light and give you natural results. External macro lenses, uh, you can use those to screw in uh, the front of the housing. So not going to work on the front of the camera, but it will work on the front of the housing. And this can give you slightly better results for macro subjects. Not much better, slightly better. So you'll have to decide whether it's worth spending the extra couple of hundred dollars on the system. Because then if you're taking something normal size, if you want to be a bit further away, your camera's not going to focus. So then you're going to have to remove it, put it in the pocket, hold it whilst you're trying to take your shots. Composition is going to be really important to your results. So I'm going to show you a few photos to show you what I mean. So the main thing is, rule number one is, don't take photos of the subject from above. So if you're going to take a photo of the top of your head, that's not really going to be a great photo, is it? And it's not a great photo of a fish or other underwater uh, critters. Likewise, a lot of people see the fish and they chase after it from behind. Pictures of fish tails are not so interesting either. So avoid chasing the, your subjects and taking photos from behind as well as above. The key thing here is to try and focus on your subject's eye if you can. So whether it's a shrimp or a fish, the new branch will have rhinocores sticking up. So what you do is you half press the shutter, not full. So half press, focus on the part of the subject that you want, and then you recompose and then click to take the shot. Also, try and experiment with where you have the subject. So because if you focus on the center, most people focus on the center of the subject and then take the shot. Why don't you recompose and try a few shots with the subject to one side? Or try and get a bit of background. Maybe you can uh, uh, get clear water behind your subjects and that way you're going to get a nice black background. So that'd be really good for the photos, more interesting. And in general, um, you're going to start to give a little bit of a story with your subject if you include some of the uh, surroundings, maybe the coral or the vegetation. They can add different colors or add interest, maybe a contrast to the, the colors of your subjects. So that's going to be more interesting as well. Um, the last thing is to try different perspectives. So um, the easiest thing to do is if you've got your subject, is more convenient to take the shots from up here. But actually, you want to be down here much more often. 
be at eye level or at uh, your critter level to get best, uh, uh, best shots. You don't have to always be in front. Uh, with frogfish, I like to show the frogfish slightly at an angle so you can see the body curling into the background. You might sometimes go above if you've got something like a flatworm. So I'll show you an example of that where you can see the colors on its back, uh, like the Persian carpet uh, flatworm, which I'll show you now. Um, so remember, photography is not a spectator sport. See you next time.